It's up there. Yeah. So. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, and thanks very much to Ed uh, for inviting FEC to be part of this um, panel session and also for, for inviting us to Bristol. Bristol is actually a place I haven't visited yet until today, and I managed to see a little bit of it this morning and last night when I got in. It looks lovely, so I'm hoping to have a little walk before I go out to London again. Yes, um, I'm going to be talking about the journey that the FSC, the Forest Stewardship Council, has been on the past kind of two years um, in the process of actually developing a consumer-facing brand. And how did we go from our very lovely mission, which is, of course, at the very heart of what the FSC does, um, to a great strapline and to a great consumer campaign. And I'd like to take you through a little bit of what we've done as a network, as an organization, and also how we start to see it now rolling out in partnership with some of the big corporate clients that all use FEC and, and, and FEC products. <clears throat> so just for those people in the room who don't know who FEC is, are there any people who don't know who we are? Oh, you all know. It's great. <laughs> okay. Anyway, this is who we are. We are an independent, international, non-profit organization. Um, we're the world's leading organization in terms of promoting responsible forest management. Um, we've been around for 20 years, and this is also part of why we actually decided to do this whole new branding um, after being around for 20 years and kind of realizing, well, we had to take the next step now in terms of positioning ourselves um, in the market. Um, we actually are very... We're based on three main principles of how we engage with stakeholders and engage with the forest. Um, so everything that we do is based on these three issues. We take all the issues around the social things in the forest into account. Everything that has to do with e the economics, of course, people managing forests and selling forest products or making them also need to make money. And then, of course, also the environmental issues in the forest, which are probably the more well-known aspects of responsible forest management. If you ask anybody if we have an issue with social, if we have social issues in the forest in Europe, they'll say no. But this is absolutely not true. People think that the social issues are only in the Amazon, for example. But we have them everywhere as we do the environmental issues. Um, and just a snapshot of where FSC is at the moment. FSC has over 184 million hectares certified globally. We know that this is still quite a small percentage of the world's productive forests. So there's still a huge job for us to do the next years. Um, but we have 30, over 30,000 certified companies in the system. Um, we have 145,000 smallholders. Um, and we have um, 850 members, more or less, in, in, um, in over 82 countries. So we're really a global organization working across many countries, working across many kinds of stakeholders. Um, and I give you this snapshot because it also illustrates the complexities of such an organization, such a multi-stakeholder um, system and how we can actually get consensus on something like a consumer-facing brand, which, quite honestly, I didn't think we would at the beginning when we started this process um, with the research with Futera, but we did get there. Um, so another reason why we decided to do this consumer-facing branding at this point was, of course, we've been around for 20 years. We have our certificate holders saying to us, FEC, you know, you're out there, you're using, we're all using you. What are you going to do about actually increasing the consumer awareness around forest products? Um, we have enjoyed enormous growth, both in, our, in the forest area certified over the past five years, as well as in the chain of custody, which is what happens after the wood actually leaves the forest and how it gets processed. So big growth for the organization in both areas. Um, additionally, actually, as an organization, we... Everybody in FEC described FEC as something different. If you went around the organization and to one of our 45 network partners around the world and asked them you know, to describe FEC or to communicate FEC, everybody was doing this in a completely different way, in their own way. And so we also needed to actually anchor our messaging and our branding in something that was actually universal across the organization and that we could get away from this kind of everybody describing FEC in a, in a different way. Additionally, another reason why we decided to do it was that we're in the hands of millions of consumers every day. Um, everybody, all of us today, has used many different forest products and continue to use them as we sit in this room and to enjoy them. And so we're out there with consumers across all these different products, many of which people don't even know actually um, come from forests. Did everybody know that there's wood in ice cream, for example? No, this is something I learned recently. I was quite amazed at, by that. So wood, wood fiber is used in so many different products every day. And we don't want to do without those products. And so FEC is there in your hands, but yet somewhat we're invisible. And people are disconnected 
from the fact that we actually use forest products in our everyday life. We don't think about it when we're just interacting with them all the time. So this was another reason why we actually wanted to do this branding, also to bring this reconnection with the products that we actually have and love and want in our lives every day. So um, another um, element that we took into account when we started this work was we didn't want to just raise awareness about what FSC is. Of course, that's an important part of what we need to do. But we wanted to find out, was this something that we need to be saying to the consumer, to the everyday person doing their shopping, making purchasing decisions, that would actually resonate with them to the extent that they would actually ask for FSC certified products and actually buy those products. Because then we would really be able to show the people that have invested in FSC certification, the companies and the the, all the cert certified companies in the system, that there was actually another value to FSC apart from the fact that they were doing the right thing, that they were contributing towards social and environmental issues, but that maybe there might also be an economic value for them by extra sales of their products. So this was really what we had at the bottom of it um, when we started this whole exercise. What is that that we need to be saying to people? And then, of course, if we can do that, and we can drive the demand for more of these products, well, we should then drive the area that's certified, which should actually then contribute to FSC's mission, which is about actually about the forest at the end of the day. And we needed to go from this lovely logo, the FSC tick tree, which many of you know and will see on products um, and in promotion. We, need to, we needed to move a step away from that and say, well, our, lo our logo and trademark is lovely, and we protect it, and we love it. And it's the first point of visibility for FEC. But we need to go beyond that now. We're, we're, we've been around for 20 years. We need to go and actually develop FEC as a brand. And actually, uh, many people would not think of us as a brand, even within the system. And people say, well, no, you're not a brand. You're just a, you're just a label. You're, you're, you're a label of verification of certification. And actually, recently, in interactions with a big, large, large corporate, who I won't name, they actually didn't want to do something with us because they said we don't co-brand with other brands. So that was a real like, guess for me is if somebody like that thinks we're a brand, then we're on the, right, on the right track. But we need to be better known and understood by the consumers in whose hands we are every day. So we've done a process, um, a three-stage process. The first part was the research. So we had to do proper research to understand what, we, what it is that consumers know about forest products, you know, what are their behaviors around buying forest products, how disconnected or connected are they to the forest? And then we had to bring it to life. And actually now we're in the, in the rollout phase where we finally start to see some of this come to life. And I think not even Ed has even seen some of the examples I may show at the end of where this is actually being rolled out in partnership with some of our corporate companies. But firstly, to the issue of partnerships. Um, as I mentioned, FSC is a global organization. We have um, you know, offices in 45 countries. Everybody's talking about FSC in a different way. And so one of the things we had to do right at the very beginning was to bring together a global brand positioning committee within the organization. So with representatives from our network partners around the world and the regional offices, um, in order to be able to just work as a group on this and so that it wasn't the global office doing a piece of work and coming out and saying, here you are, network offices, here's a lovely new branding for you. But it was actually had to be a process of everybody being involved in that. Um, so we had this network um, advisory committee, and really their role was to provide feedback, to make sure that whatever we were doing or working on actually would be applicable in the different parts of the world that we work in. Of course, you know, we're working in over 100 countries, and actually to help us with decision making at each step, so that we would all be on the same page at the end, and we wouldn't have spent, you know, thousands of euros on something that people went and said, well, this doesn't really, you know, work for us, or it doesn't work in Asia, or it doesn't work in Brazil, for example. So this was a really, really good learning um, process for us in FEC, and one at the end that I think hugely contributed to the success of, of what we actually ended up with. Secondly, we went, you know, we don't have uh, expertise on consumer research, so we hired an agency called GFK, um, it's a US-based agency, and they did the consumer-facing research for us. And we particularly chose them because they had a very interesting segmentation of consumers. Um, we also wanted to find out you know, who within this big body of mainstream consumers uh, is the most susceptible to our message right now and would be the people that would kind of take that message out there and amplify it for us. So we worked with them. And then last but not least, of course, we worked with Futera and Ed and his team who then took this research and actually turned this into the creative work and the brand strategy and all the other things that's, that's come out of this for us. Um, just to say that 
working with Futera was an interesting experience for us, and I think for Futera, working with FSC too. Um, and at times, we were very grateful uh, to Edney's team for saying no to us when we wanted to insist on having certain things in the branding that uh, are very technical and that we believe were the right way. They were very good at saying, no, FEC, you cannot do this. No, you cannot say that. Um, and in fact, pointing out to us that at some, in some instances, we were actually our own worst enemies. So we were still grateful to Futero for pushing us on some of those issues. Um, we started with the consumer research in the US in 2012, and then we went on in 2013 to do um, 11 additional markets. We researched over 9,000 consumers, um, and as far as we know, this is the largest consumer research that has been done to date just um, on forest products, asking people about the forest products that they have and use in their life. So these were the markets, um, the demographics of the respondents, and one of the main things that came out of this, uh, we have over 200 pages of wonderful research, which is very interesting on many different things. But one of the main things was around this issue of the FEC trademark and the logo. So people knew our logo generally and found it to be influential in some cases. But we became much more influential in people's purchasing decisions when we added something to that. So this was very clear, it was no longer enough just to put the logo out, you know, out there on a product. We need it, it's the first point of visibility, but in order to really influence those decisions, we need to be saying something else to the consumer. So this is really the validation of what we had wanted to do right at the beginning, you know, what, what do we need to be saying to people. Um, out of the research came a lot of interesting things, as I said, but I will just highlight three things. So um, consumers are concerned about things, I think we know that. They, you know, they worry about a lot of things that's happening out in the world, and in our research, the two main issues that, that really concern them are climate change and environmental pollution. So it varied somewhat in some of the markets, but as an aggregated you know, result, th these are the two things that they're really, really worrying about. But then actually they don't know what to do about it. So we know these things. You know, People um, have good intentions to do something for the environment or for social issues, but generally they're too busy, they don't know how to do it. All of these things that we know, um, they feel you know, others are responsible. And so again here, over 80% of our consumers that um, responded to the survey actually said, well, actually, companies are responsible for fixing these problems. We don't know how to do it. We don't know how to fix the problems of the world's forests. It's too big for us. We don't know what to do with it. So we expect that companies will do it and put the right products in front of us. But, so now they're concerned about these things. They, you know, they expect companies should fix it and that they're responsible, but they don't trust what companies are telling them. Um, so, you know, if they go on a company's website or they see some advertising or something, they don't really believe that to be necessarily true. Um, but the moment the company uses a certification mark like FSC, the level of trust increases with regards to the social or environmental credentials that the company or the product is actually claiming to have. So it becomes much more, um, they become much more trusted for the consumer when the consumer actually sees that there is the certification label like FEC attached. Okay, so that was a bit about the research and then we went to the work with Futera to bring this all to life. So how did we get from, and Tallulah who's here from our US, uh, UK office is gonna hopefully correct me if I don't remember FEC's mission because it's a beautiful mission but very few of us can actually say it all in one sentence, but how do we go from the Forest Stewardship Council shall promote responsible manage, uh, so, shall promote environmentally um, appropriate, socially uh, beneficial, economically viable management of the world's forests? <laughs> that was right. right, yes. How did we go, oh, I missed one slide, but I'm gonna go ahead quickly. So how did we go from that to this with Futera, to forests for all forever? which every time I still see it aired, I have to, it is just beautiful. Um, so this is the new strap line in the creative material that Futera has developed for us as FEC. And um, forests. So really, forests is what FEC is about. This is our reason for existence. This is why we're here. This is the work that we do. For all is about the inclusive nature of the forest. So it's about everything that's in the forest, the people, the biodiversity, the animals, everything that's there. Also the fact that many people live and work in the forest, the fact that forest products should be available for everybody to use. Um, everybody's going like, oh, what are we gonna do when oh, everybody in India wants toilet paper and toilet tissue? Well, you know, actually we have enjoyed those products for many years and we don't wanna give them up. But we don't want you know, India to suddenly want, you know, demonstrate all this demand for all these forest products. But we believe that everybody has the right also to make use of the products that come from the forest and to have them in their lives. 
And then thirdly, it's about forever. So this is the aspirational part of FEC's work. If we do this work well, and we, we responsibly manage the resources that we have, then they should be there in the future for us to continue to be able to enjoy them. So this is the new strap line. I'm just going to go back, just because I skipped the slide on what else we did with Futura. But, so in all of this work, we did not only this creative work on the forest for all forever, but we also did a strategy. So brand strategy, kind of what is our tone of voice? How do we speak to people? How do we measure success? You know, this is really important. So, you know, what are we going to see in a year from now? You know, where did Forest for All Forever get picked up? Who's been using it? You know, which partnerships do we have in place with companies to roll it out? And then there's all the creative work, which I'm just going to take you through a couple of the examples that are in our in the toolkit. And we put this all in an online toolkit, and it's available for free to all our certified companies. So any company can go in there and just choose the Forest for All Forever logo, and they can use it. Or they can choose of the other assets that are in there, run a campaign, they can do something in store, they can do something online. So it's really something in there for everybody to use. So these are some of the examples. And in all of the examples, you will see that uh, we talk directly to the consumer at that point in time when they're having to make a decision about something. So this is about you know, when you're going into the DIY store to build a new decking outside in your garden. Then we can talk at this point in time to the consumer directly. So it's not just about it's not just the decking that they're taking care of, but they're taking care of the forest too by making the choice for FSC certified decking. So everything has a little story in addressing the consumer, and then there's a bit of additional information, and then there's the call to action, which is the choose FSC part. So first we're actually making this emotional connection with the consumer and the, the, the purchase that they're about to make. Um, there's one for shopping packets. Um, we have the film, which we're going to show in a minute. There's lots of stuff we can do on social media. There's lots of stuff we can do in store when we have beautiful wooden pro um, products. There's lots of stuff in the toolkit for inspiration, so um, for you know banners in store or you know coffee cups. So you know, wake up to a life full of forest while you're drinking your coffee. You can actually be taking care of the forest too if your cup is FSC certified. So there's lots of great ways in which we can engage the consumer at all different points of their daily life as they're interacting with all these different forest products which they don't have at the top of mind that they're actually using. Um, Frank, uh, FEC Frank, the cutout bear, became really, really famous in South Africa at the World Forestry Congress, which happened in September this year, because we had Frank there and we took him around and he had his picture taken with lots of all the, you know, all the celebs that were at the, at the World Forestry Congress. Um, and that was a really cool way to interact with people just to give a you know, fun forest message. But this is an example where it can be used in store in the DIY environment again, when you're going there to make a purchase you know, of timber. Um, and then you know, when you get your books delivered by Amazon, whoever you're buying things online from, um, and then you know, books, who doesn't love a great story? So there's lots of really interesting, fun places. And I think you will really notice that none of it is heavy. None of it is really, oh, like the forest are in trouble, whatever. Um, this was not the tone and the style that we wanted to take with this. It was about an emotional connection, about a lightness of engagement with people, inspiring them to make different choices. I must admit that some of my forester colleagues are still to this day disappointed that I'm not showing a picture of a chainsaw and somebody you know, cutting down a tree because that's really what we do. But we stayed away from that. <laughs> and I think this was the power of the partnership with the network partners who helped us develop this, that we were able to get beyond some of those things that people really felt we should be saying. So early examples of campaigns, we're hugely excited. We're working with the corporate community in partnership to roll this out. As I said, our companies can go in and use it by themselves. FEC, it's very clear, FEC will never have the budgets to go out there and roll out this branding by itself entirely, and you know, it's just simply not there. The money's simply not there. Um, so we have no other alternative but to do it in partnership with our, with our corporate clients. So this is a great example. I don't know if some of you have been following the Hayes discussion in Singapore. That's happened because of the fires in Indonesia. And Kleenex actually jumped on the new branding and actually have put out this message saying, you know, sometimes we all need looking after. Kleenex, Kleenex helps you look after the forests too. And they've taken a first mover advantage. For us, it's really exciting. Um, the Singapore Environmental Council has really, you know, said only FSC. FSC is the only choice that there is. And we've been able to benefit from from the fact that there's been this whole haze thing over Singapore, and actually was a great example of the new branding, where together with WWF, we did this campaign called We Breathe What We Buy. So um, 
we'll be measuring this also and to see you know, what, what comes out of this. But um, yeah, this is a super example of how. So the toolkit can also be adapted by companies. They can also do bespoke campaigns together with us like this. They don't have to just go in and use what's there, although they can. In Germany, we're seeing it really being taken up as well. These are three examples where our office in Germany has got, there's one thing where we have the Tetra Pak using it on pack. So that's going out. Then they have a, um, a discount supermarket, which is sending out, I think it's 22 million of these flyers with a QR code and a message about Forest for All Forever, where people can go and get more information. And then they manage to have a one-page um, magazine, in a, um, ad in a magazine called House and Mensch, so um, Home and People, where they're actually talking about um, building blocks for children. And this is something that they've taken also from the toolkit and actually just adapted the text at the top to talk about the building blocks. Um, and you can also... In the toolkit, you can change the animals, you can change the pictures of the people, so it's very interactive, it's not, not a static thing. So this is a great example, again, of where it's being used across different channels and where you can reach the consumer at different points. And then in South Africa, we had um, Tetra Pak also rolling this out um, at the World Forestry Congress, actually on the outer packaging of the bottles of water that they actually had at the, at the conference. So, and this is in Spain, um, a great example of a partnership with a, um, with a retailer, El Corte Inglés, um, beautiful shopping experience, um, and they've done a back-to-school campaign with, with the branding, and also, you know, they have a, um, it's been rolled out in Spain and Portugal, um, and they have a link also where people can go to a website, they can watch the film, they can get more information about the campaign. So, these are just early examples, I think, of how we are rolling this out in partnership with brands. Um, I think you can watch the space. We're going to be doing a lot more of this as, as people really start to take up the branding. Um, and these are, for us, why these are so important because we will never have that reach, that reach to consumers. You know, FSC doesn't produce any products by itself. We don't have access to the consumers, but the corporate clients do. And so, um, you know, we just have to give them the tools to be able to bring that forest message to people. Um, this is also about the campaign. And I think then we're going to show the film if that's many things in our lives come from forests. FSC helps take care of the forests for future generations, so you can enjoy forest products in your life and look after the life of the forest. Choose FSC. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.